In this video of the Intermediate Integrated Data Viewer Tutorial Series, we're going to talk about one of the IDV's newest features. The ability to plot isentropic surfaces and heights was added in response to a user request. Programs able to perform isentropic analysis are often restricted to certain dates and data sets if they're publicly available. If you want to plot forecasted or archived data, the IDV is by far the most accessible option. I'll divide isentropic analysis into two videos for you. This one will cover analysis of vectors, specifically wind. The next video will go over how to plot scalar quantities like isentropic potential vorticity, or IPV. First, we'll open one of the isentropic current weather bundles. These bundles show one way to display isentropic surfaces in the IDV. They're great for introducing students to the concept of isentropic analysis and for presentation figures. The colors and three-dimensionality of these plots mean that they're quite different from the charts used for hand analysis. They still show the wind vectors, which highlight areas of ascent and descent along the isentropic surface in a way that the layperson can understand. You can also create more traditional isentropic charts suitable for hand analysis or paper figures. This is easier to set up from the two-dimensional overhead view. The data set that you choose doesn't actually have to have any information about potential temperature. The 40km NAM has all of the thermodynamic variables needed for the IDV to calculate potential temperature and all of its related parameters. If you think that your data set has all of the right parameters, but the derived temperatures aren't being calculated, take a look at the alias manager under Tools. These parameter names are kind of long, so I'm going to stretch out the window so that you can read everything. The potential temperature isosurface is the height of the isosurface. A contour plan view of the height of this isosurface gives you the same type of diagram as Nemias used in his famous 1938 paper. I'll throw the link to this paper in the description for anyone who's interested in meteorology history. I'll just do one time step, but you could do more. After hitting the Create Display button, you have to choose which isentrope you want plotted. You may want to use the predefined intervals, but I find plots easier to understand with regularly spaced isolines. And just because it's what I used in class, I like the iso heights to be black. Making the iso heights black does cause an obvious problem when you have a black background. In this case, or if you ever plan to print a plot, it's a good idea to make the background white. I'm going to rearrange the windows again so that it's easier to flip back and forth. The contour labels here look a little bit sloppy. We can tidy them up by changing the contour properties. You can choose almost any common font for the contour labels. Some are easier to read than others. The font size can be adjusted to make your labels legible without obscuring your diagram. Just play with these settings until you're happy with your labels, and don't be afraid to experiment. I was quite surprised to find that Comic Sans looks very professional and legible as a labeling font. Depending on how you plan to use your figure, you may want to smooth the contours. Several smoothing algorithms are available and are very easy to apply. But what's an isentropic chart without wind? You could just pick one height level to plot winds for, but that may not be representative of the actual movement along the isentropic surface. You can use the potential temperature isosurface vector analysis to calculate any vector quantity, including wind, at the height of the isentropic surface. There are a few display options here, including some that aren't in version 5.6, but will be included in the next release. If you need wind barbs and you can't wait, you can go to Unidata's website and download the nightly build. It's probably best to use the same isentrope as we did for the height display for consistency. There are several wind parameters available, so a window will pop up and you can specify the one that you want. Again, we'll just use one time step. There are way too many wind barbs on this plot, and they're way too big. Reducing the size makes it so that we can see the iso heights again, but to see the wind barbs individually, we need to increase the skip factor. And although cyan might be pretty, it doesn't have great contrast against a white background. Remember that you can always change the background maps to make your figure easier to understand. It's important to keep the maps clean and visible so that you and your audience know exactly what you're looking at. There'll be more details on isentropic plotting in the next video. If you have any questions, visit our website at unidata.ucar.edu or email support-idv at unidata.ucar.edu.